Okay, check it out. Shrimp got pointy little things on, so that's something you got. <laughs> Yo, what is up, all you Stone Cold Superfly? Illmatic Fish Keep It Fucking Done. So you watch Aqua Funk Aquatus with me, Aqua Funk. Today, we're going to be talking about fish food. And before you change that channel, before you press the sw to, to, to the next video, please stick around. We talk a lot about external properties when it comes to fish. Um, water quality, filtration, and all that stuff. We we'll talk about the water, but we don't really have an in-depth discussion over the internal, the guts. I mean, let's be honest, that's really what's going to make your fish healthy. You know what I mean? It, it goes on inside. All that stuff we do as far as external, it's all to help the internal, but we don't talk about what we put in their mouth directly into their system. You know, working on their immunity, working on their growth, working on their coloration. That's all internal. So let's let's ha let's have a talk about how to feed your fish, what to feed your fish, and why it is that we're doing what we're doing. What is the outcome we're trying to achieve and how best to do that. Okay, full disclosure, all right? I was on the phone with my man, Diego, from Petzotics, and I was talking to him about ordering some food so I could have up, do an upcoming video on fish food, what to feed your fish, like, just like I'm doing now. This video right here is what we were talking about. And he says, you know, hey, look, I'm doing it for um, educational purposes. He went ahead and sent all this stuff to me for free. So I guess you could say this is sponsored. I'd like to um, call it a collaboration between fish keepers um, for educational purposes. You. So Diego, I'm going to put the link to his um, channel and his um, website where you can purchase all of these things um, in the description below. So let's get into it. Okay, so... Let's start out with how much to feed your fish. It's a big, big debate. Um, a lot of people do different ways. I personally do once a day because of my schedule. Now, that's the important thing. I'm really big on balance. That's my whole thing as far as fish, fish keeping goes. I believe that's why I've had the success that I've had. Balance because of consistency. Consistency it makes balance, right? You do the same thing over and over again. Your water balances out. There's no big drastic changes. So I do once a day because that fits my schedule. So what you have to do is you need to feed your fish according to your schedule so that it can maintain a balance. Feeding fish different amounts, different days, different times of the day is not really good for your tank. Now here I got a thing of flu bug bite flakes, okay? Normally I don't use the flakes, I use the pellets because I'm going to get to that in a little later, but I just happen to have some flakes here that Diego sent. Um, it's high protein. These are tropical flakes, by the way, all right? Um, here, I want, I want you to see something. I don't know if you can see it because of the light. Let me see if I can get it on there. There, no artificial flavors and preservatives, fillers and preservatives. That's very important. The reason why that is important is you want to have as little fillers and preservatives as possible. The reason why is because those fillers and preservatives cannot be digested by your fish and it comes out in the poop. So it's just more waste in your tank than needs to be. So if you can feed them something that their body can absorb completely as much as possible, I mean, you're always going to have poop, just uh, part of life. Um, but if you could cut that down as much as possible, the less, the less dirtying of the water you'll be doing so that's a good thing another thing i want to show you about as far as um fillers and preservatives go is uh let me see here um this one doesn't say on here there's this thing called ash a s h ash right and you'll see it on the back of some of these uh some of these um packages and um the important thing about what ash is ash is if you took this fish food right and you set it on fire Right, you burnt it up. Um, what's left is the ash. So that stuff also is not um, digestible. So you want to have something with as little ash as possible. Um, I'm trying to find something which ash that it actually has it on there, and this has 17% ash. Uh, that's that's kind of high um, as far as ash goes. So if you can get the number down as low as possible, I mean, you're never going to get it to zero. But if you can get it down as low as possible, that's what you want. So no fillers and preservatives as little fillers and preservatives as, as possible and as little ash as possible. Now, when you're talking about feeding your fish, you have um, zones. You have feed, fish that feed at the top, fish that feed at the bottom, and fish that feed in the middle. So you're gonna have to maybe get, depending on what type of fish you get, different types of food to meet their needs. All right, now we're gonna talk about how much to feed your food, how much to feed your fish. Right here it says, just for instance, it says 
feed as much as the fish can eat in two minutes, two to three times a day. Like I said, you got to do what's right for your schedule to keep a balance. Um, I, I The two to three minutes, I don't have a problem with. The two to three times a day, if I was trying to grow out fry, I say yes. But for everyday fish, no. You got you to gotta observe the fish. You got to observe their bellies. Um, if their bellies, right, that normally has a little, little dip in it like that if you're looking at your fish the underside of your fish and your fish ha is either straight or concave um concave inward you're not feeding them enough all right if it's straight eh, you're on the borderline it should have a slight bulge in the belly at all times slight okay it, you can't make these things look like they ate up they swallowed a, a marble okay i mean you can but you're just going to dirty up your water for no reason at all all that extra stuff that your fish can't take in goes right out of the ash hole. I couldn't help myself. Ash hole. Get it? Get it? Baby, you Oh, you didn't hear me. She would have got it. Okay, so that's tropical fish. You know, you, that's the tropical fish food is pretty much um, a general fish. All fish will pretty much eat tropical fish food. Let's say you have cichlids, right? Like these right here. Bang. Bang. What else I got here? Some more cichlid food. Let's say you have cichlids, okay? Um, a lot of the foods that cichlids eat, and you'll read on the back, it'll have a high amount of protein. This this um this hikari right here has 40% protein. That's that's a good amount of protein. Um, tropical foods will have less, but when it reaches up in a 40% protein, that's the, and higher, that's pretty good. The highest protein I've seen in fish food is discus food. Um, because they do beef heart. I mean, I've seen up to 52%, but um, 40% protein is, is a good is a good good uh, thing for cichlids that are primarily um, meat eaters. Now, even with that, you got to think about your water. If you this right here, it's um floating floating stock. I like this when it comes to feeding Oscars because if you feed too much, right, or if you uh, too much at one time. It won't sink to the bottom and get lost. It'll always be up there and your fish will eventually get it. I'm not saying you, this gives you the right to feed too much because maybe they get overfed, they don't mess with it at all, and then it dissolves into nothing. This just follows your water. But the chances of it disappearing at, in the rocks is slim to none. Um, if you want, you can get slow sinking, you know, slow sinking food. I think this is it. No, this is, I get all floating. Now, this right here, this um, Aquion pellets, now this thing sinks straight to the bottom. It says slow sinking, and and I, I mean, I guess it's slow. It's, it's enough for my fish to, to get it, but it still ends up at the bottom before my fish can get it. Um, so, yeah, that's what you want to think about when you're feeding fish that eat at the top and the middle. Is Are they going to be able to get it before it falls down to the bottom and disappears? Now we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about some specialty foods for specialty fish. We're going to talk about some scavengers. Um, what I got here for scavengers? Oh, I got these two. These are great for scavengers. These are two types of food that are really, really awesome for scavengers. You got this one right here. These are um, veggie wafers. And just to give you a for instance, remember the cichlid food that was 40% protein? Wasn't too shabby? This um, veggie wafers is 33% protein. So, And uh, this uh, shrimp pellets is 45% protein. Now, th these two things are really, really suited for... Your bottom feeder vegetarians, like your your um, placos and stuff like that, and this is for your catfish. All right, the problem with these two is that a lot of times you want to feed this type of food at night because it's still food that your other fish will want to eat, especially this one. Um, so this stuff you'd want to feed it at night where the other fish can't necessarily see it, and because um, scavengers have such a great sense of smell, they'll be able to find it and uh, they'll be able to take advantage of that. So. That's what you want to think about when you're feeding bottom feeders. Now let's talk about some specialty food that's directly formulated for a particular fish. For instance, we got this Tetra Goldfish Crisp. Okay, now this this stuff I like to keep it around, even though I don't keep goldfish. This is a heavy, heavy veggie floating type deal. Now because I, I normally keep cichlids, right? So they eat at the top and in the middle. They eat all over. But but I like to vary their diet, right? I like to give them some extra vegetable matter. I, I get this, you know, just to give them a little a salad. I mean, that's the best way I could explain it. It's a salad. We got some betas, like this beta I have right here. Um, beta food, like you, you guys may not think it, 
But beta food actually is very, very high in protein. Um, let me see what this, uh, this Nutrafin Max has for protein. Betas are actually carnivorous. So let's see what it says for protein on this one. Of course, it's not going to tell me. Crude protein, crude protein, 46% protein. So that's something you want to think about. Betas are meat eaters, okay? We got some spirinella right Oh, here goes some other algae crisps that I got from um, Diego. And uh, yeah, algae wafers, bottom feed, all fish love them. Um, and here goes some spirinella. Now, spirinella is interesting because spirinella, this one's from Bug Bites also. Spirinella is, it, this is a really high plant protein diet for um, vet, vet, basically vegetables and vitamins. Um, it's beneficial for oil fish. Um, this stuff is also supposed to be really good for color. Okay, so that's why I feed it. I actually feed this. I got some fry in my uh, summer tub and thing, and I feed this to them. Um, oh, look, see, this one, remember I showed you the other one that had 17%, what was it? The ash, I think it was like at 17%. This stuff right here, this um, Bug Bites, who they're claiming the fame is all natural, this thing has 5% ash. Um, so that gives you an idea of how, you know, how different the ash content and stuff is. So this is very low in ash. It's very good, you know. And also, no, um, I, now here's the thing, I'm not advocating go food with Bug Bites, but from what I'm reading, you know, the byproduct, you know, the, <laughs> the stuff, the ash that come out and, and all the poop looks like it would be very minimal. Um, so, and then we have this here, shrimp, freeze-dried shrimp. Uh, this stuff is more of a treat for the Oscar, you know, and it don't, ooh, it don't smell that bad. I mean, it smells like salt. Ow! Okay, check it out. Shrimp got pointy little things on, so that's something you got. I <laughs> All right, seven day feeder. Not a fan. All right, so what do I feed? What's my go-to fish food, okay? Well, my go-to fish food is what I can get on a regular basis, all right? That's very important because of the whole balance thing. It, it, it makes no sense, like this, this bug bite stuff is great and all that, but if I couldn't get this exact brand on a regular basis, then, eh, you know, what, what good is it to me? I do believe in switching food up, but you want to keep your core food, the food that you keep on a regular basis that you feed them as that staple diet, um, the same. And you want to add in extra stuff occasionally for variety. So what I feed them, I feed a mix of this sinking stuff right here, um, slow sinking. Um, I feed Hikari pellets, Hikari gold for color. And Fluval, and I don't have it, but Fluval makes the bug bites, they make a pellet form. Um, and that's what I feed it. I kind of, I just put it all in one bag and I get the little pellets because the angels and some of the smaller fish, the bigger fish can find it too. Not to mention my geos like sifting through the small, the sand. So, um, I get the smaller pellets and I put all three in a bag. Now, mind you, I get the majority this big and this big. And then this one, I'll get a smaller can of the, of the pellets because it's expensive. But when you mix it all up, this is a very, very healthy variety of food for cichlids. Um, my bigger Oscar, of course, you know I use a bigger pellet. Um, and even with even with this this spirinella stuff right here, right? I mean this where is it? The spirinella stuff right here. You crush this up, alright? You crush this up and it's perfect for fry. Okay? So these are the foods that I use right here. Then I will occasionally give them some of this, but to be honest with you, all the fish attack it, and I'll drop in this stuff um, at night. Okay, so there's a lot of brands out there um, that have a hefty price tag. Here's the thing, and, and if you're the one, if you're the guy who said it, then you know who you are. But I've heard it from different people. Um, who started this phrase? I don't know, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. It makes if you can have the best ingredients in the world, you can have the most expensive, the expensive, nutritious food with no additives and this, that, and the other. And the, you can have the most expensive stuff in the world and your fish not eat it. Then you can have the everyday, ordinary, um, you know, lowest price food in the world and your fish eat it. Which ones are more beneficial to your fish? This expensive, high price stuff that your fish won't eat and end up dying of starvation? Doubt they'll die of starvation, but they won't be as as they, they won't be as um 
you know, they won't be as healthy as they should be if they're not eating the, the amount. But if they don't eat this expensive stuff, what good is it? It ain't good at all. All this stuff is good for your fish. Some are just better. If they only eat that, then good for you. You don't have to buy this expensive stuff. But if your fish do eat this and you can afford to get it on a regular basis, then do that. But if you can't, if it's one of them up and down, up and down, up and down things, don't try and make that a staple of your fish diet. Um, I didn't talk about frozen food, and I'll talk about that in the video because there's preparation involved with that. But that's what I got for you guys so far. Um, as far as fish food, I hope you guys learned something. I hope maybe I answered some questions. Please, in the comments below, let me know if I helped out. All right, guys. You know what time it is. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Take care of your fish.